Welcome everyone. We're at Woodlawn Roche Patton Funeral Home and Memorial Park in Nashville, Tennessee. And to be exact, we're at 660 Thompson Lane. And we're going first into the Cross Mausoleum and visit some legends of country music. We're going to make this a two-parter. We're going to do the mausoleum and also the grounds because there's so many stars here to visit. If you're liking these videos, please subscribe, like, and ring the bell for notifications so you'll know that I'm putting content on. And if you could, when you subscribe, put it in the comments and we'll do our best to get back with you. So I hope you'll join us today. Definitely when you come in the door, come straight to the office because they will give you a map of all of the stars that are buried here. They were so kind and nice. Oh my gosh. Some of the cemeteries, they'll say no filming, whatever. This girl gave me a beautiful map, told me exactly where to go, told me she prays for people that come here. It was wonderful. Great experience already, so I'm getting ready to head down to the mausoleum first. Well, the first one we come to is Little Jimmy Dickens. And I've actually seen him on the Grand Ole Opry when he was alive. He was born on December 19th, 1920, and passed away on January 2nd, 2015. And Mona, his wife, is still alive. And they have a little statue. Let me tell you a little bit about him, if you didn't know him. He was, he's a Country Music Hall of Fame singer. And he was hospitalized after a stroke on December 25th, 2014, six days after marking his 80th birthday. And it would be his last appearance on the opera. He died of cardiac arrest on January 2nd, 2015 at 94. And his funeral was January 8th, 2015 at the Grand Ole Opera House. And his name was his name was James Cecil Dickens, known as Little Jimmy, and he was an American country music singer and songwriter, famous for his novelty songs. He was only four eleven, and he wore his rhinestone studded, studded suits made by Nudie. We've talked about Nudie, and he was credited for introducing all of those um, suits into the Grand Ole Opry, and he has been a member since 1948 and was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1983. And before his death, he was the oldest living member of the Opry. Rest in peace. Now above that, Guy Tomlin and Lily Tomlin, Lily Mae Tomlin, are Lily Tomlin's mom and dad. So you guys know who she is. One ringy dingy, two ringy dingies. Here's Lynn Anderson. I never promised you a rose garden. She was born in 47 and died in 2015. She was born in Grand Forks, North Dakota and grew up in Sacramento, California. She was a multi-award winning American country music singer known for her hits in the 70s and 80s, most notably her mega hit, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. She charted 12 number ones, 18 top tens and more than 50 top 40 hits. Her crossover appeal and regular exposure on national TV helped her become one of the most popular and successful country artists. She was also named top female vocalist of the Academy Country Music Awards in 70 and female vocalist of the year by the CMA. She won a Grammy and a People's Choice Award, named record, she was named Record Worlds Magazine and Billboard Magazine's female artist of the decade in the 70s and 80s. She also starred on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. In 62 and late 71, the first of several appearances she would make with Carson at the helm. She also became the first female country artist to win American Music Award in 74, as well as the first to headline and sell out Madison Square Gardens the same year. She released 30 albums and sold over 20 million records worldwide. She was also in several films and television so shows. Rest in peace, Lynn. Well, the next we come to is the great Tammy Wynette. They have pictures of her all over. Now, this does say her and George Jones together forever, but he was married to someone else when they passed away. Someone's leaving flowers. 
Now, Tammy Wynette, her real name was Virginia Wynette Pugh, born on May 5, 1942. She died April 6, 1998, and was considered country music icon called the First Lady of Country Music. And she was considered one of the most influential and successful artists in country music, along with Loretta Lynn. They helped bring a women's perspective to the male-dominated country music field, and it helped other women find representation. 20 of her singles topped the Billboard country charts during her career, and her signature song, Stand By Your Man, received both acclaim and criticism for its portrayal of women's loyalty toward their husbands. She received various awards and honors and nominations for her work and included two accolades from the Academy of Country Music and two awards from the Record World Magazine. She received three back-to-back -back accolades from the Country Music Association for Top Female Vocalist, also nominated for 22 more times for her work. She had two Grammys for Best Female Vocalist and Grammys also nominated uh, Wynette for 12 additional times and they after her death, they nominated her song, Stand By Your Man. It was inducted to the Grammy Hall of Fame, which she'd also been inducted to into the Alabama Hall of Fame, Music Hall of Fame. And her marriage to George Jones in 1969 ended in divorce in 75, created the country music couple following the earlier, earlier success of John Cash and June Carter Cash. Jones and Wynette recorded a sequence of albums and singles that hit the charts throughout the 1970s and 80s. She had a lot of health problems and she had declining health in her final years. And she began to look more frail. One of her friends recalled watching one of her final music videos and remembered her physical condition. She said, Tammy looked ancient, like a plant that had withered up and, and was ready to die. I thought, this woman is dying. Why isn't somebody doing something? She died on April 6, 1998, while sleeping in her Nashville, Tennessee home. Her death was certified by her doctor, Wallace Marsh, who flew in from Pennsylvania to make it official. He said that the original report that she had died from a blood clot in her lung. Right next to Tammy is KT Osland, and she died at 78 years old. Kate Tanette Oslin was born on May 15, 1942, and died on December 21, 2020. She was an American country music songwriter and singer, and she had several years of major commercial successes in the late 80s after signing a record deal at age 45. She had four number one hits and placed additional singles on the Billboard country charts during this time span. In addition, she won three Grammy Awards and was inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. And she had a song, you guys remember 80s Ladies? I think all of us were singing that at that time. She was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and was moved into assisted living facility the following year. She died on December 21st, 2020. I don't know if you know who this is, but Jerry Hubbard is actually Jerry Reed. And he was born March 20th and 37 and died September 1st, 2008. Was an American singer, songwriter, guitarist, composer, um, actor who appeared in more than a dozen films. Remember Smokey and the Bandit? And he was inducted into the Musicians Hall of Fame and Museum and to the Country Music Hall of Fame in April 2017. Yeah, I remember him and Smokey and the Bandit. He was in a lot of those movies. Now this is Otis Blackwell. He was born in 32 and died in 2002, but he wrote songs for Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis. He wrote the song, All Shook Up. And this is him. My mom was born in 32. Now, this is Dottie Rambo, Joyce Reba Dottie Rambo. She was born on March in March 1934 and died on May 11, 2008. I loved her music. I used to listen to a lot of her music. She was an American gospel singer and songwriter. She was a Grammy award-winning solo artist with multiple Dove awards. Along with her husband Buck and daughter Reba, she formed the award-winning Southern gospel group, The Rambos, and she wrote more than 2,500 songs. 
She was named Songwriter of the Century in the 90s and was a member of the Gospel Music Hall of Fame and Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. As a songwriter, Whitney Houston, Elvis, Carol Channing, Sandy Patty, Barbara Mandrell, Dolly Parton, Vince Gill, Rhonda Vincent, Vestal Goodman, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis, Solomon Burke, and George Jones were among those who had recorded her songs. Her songs have appeared in movies such as Undertow, and it was very common to find her in the hymnals around the United States. The Gaither Homecoming series has featured, covered dozens of her songs. Moreover, she's appeared in five of the Gaither Homecoming videos and TV series. She died on March 11, 2008, as a result of injuries sustained in a bar bus accident along Interstate 44, just outside Mount Vernon, Missouri. She finished a performance at Calvary Life Church in Granite City, Illinois, and was en route to a Mother's Day show in Texas when the 1997 Provost bus she was traveling in ran off the road, struck a guardrail, and hit an embankment. She was pronounced dead on the scene. Her manager, Larry Ferguson, and his family were in, also injured in the crash. And before that happened, she had also had a car wreck and had excruciating back pain. Um, and then this happened. Her funeral was held at Christ Church in Nashville on May 19, 2008. And the singer sang a lot of her songs. It included a who's who of Christian music. Dottie's longtime friend, Barbara Mandrell, was one of those who eulogized her. President George Bush sent a flag that hung over the White House on the day of her passing, along with remarks that were read. Jim Ed Brown is right above Dottie. He was born in 1934 and died in 2015 at 81 of lung cancer. It's said that he is, um, was an American country music songwriter and achieved fame in the 1950s with his two sisters, the, and they were called the Browns. He later had a successful solo career from 65 to 74, followed by a string of major duet hits with fellow country music vocalist Helen Cornelius through 81. He was also a host of the show Country Music Greats Radio Show, a syndicated country music program from Nashville. He was active and popular member of the Grand Ole Opry since 63 and was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2015. Here's another one of my favorites, J.D. Sumner. And I'll show you some pictures of him. That's him with Rick Strickland. There he is singing. His wife has also passed away. She passed away before he did. He was born in 1924 and died in 98 of a heart attack. And he was Elvis's backup singer. His name was John Daniel Sumner. And he was an American gospel singer, songwriter, music producer, noted for his bass voice and his innovation with Christian and gospel music. He sang in five quartets and was a member of the Blackwood Brothers during the 1950s. Aside from his incredible low bass voice, he was a businessman and he helped promote Southern gospel music and move it into the mainstream in the 50s and 60s. For 18 years, he held the Guinness World Book of Records for recording the lowest bass note. And in 2011, he had, he had been surpassed only by the following three vocalists, Dan Britton, Tim Storms, and Roger Menez. And he was inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame in 84 and the Southern Gospel Music Association Hall of Fame in 97. And I loved listening to him and all on all the Gaither videos. I hope you enjoyed our trip today to this wonderful cemetery and visiting some of the legends of country music. I especially love Dottie Rambo and J.D. Sumner because of their gospel music. And I hope you guys have a blessed day. Remember, God loves you. Until I see you again, bye.